Well, big TV. <sighs> I've amassed every molded plastic chunk of Sega-related hardware I could find. Let's see if we can get our mysterious Genesis here to sing. Hey, just in time. I'll be playing add-on matchmaker today. So many add-ons. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but Sega's Genesis, or Mega Drive console, was a massive success through the first half of the 90s. When a console attracts as much attention as this jet black beauty here, there are bound to be enhancements tossed into the market. Uh, I'm talking about hardware that can switch up a system's capabilities, change gameplay, or do other crazy shit. For the Genesis and the Mega Drive, there were additions like the Sega CD, the 32X, the Power Base Converter, and countless of these peripherals. One of these things, when paired with our excitingly enigmatic Genesis console, unfolds a knotted puzzle lost in time. Where do we begin? Uh, what? What's that, Big TV? The Sega CD? No, no, that, that there is a, a Model 2, buddy. It is incompatible with the Model 1 Genesis. It does get me thinking about a game, though. A little title where combining items, like we're doing now, plays an important part. How about you have a peek and I'll start this Genesis brain teaser, okay? Ready? Something is waiting. Something is pinched in the sweat glop depths of old, shriveled gaming mags. Something is wedged between aged FMV softcore porn simulators and questionable first-person shooters. Tired treasure. Dissolving gems. Uh, uh, a flink. Flink was released in 1994 for the Sega CD, Mega CD, Mega Drive, and Amiga CD32, and I've only heard of it once. As a puppy, I would desperately paw through Sega CD reviews in fields of crummy used gaming zines. Flink looked special. It boasted a dynamic color palette and a fantastical medieval world. It wasn't until nearly a decade and a half later that I stumbled upon The Misadventures of Flink for the Sega CD. Now, the title was changed for North American audiences. Same game, longer name. Flink's a forgotten flavor. It looks good. Is it good? 
Do you want to play it? Does it fit into your life? Does it work? With this shitty fuck shit magic genesis, I've tried every other Sega add-on I can think of. It's gotta be the 32X Big TV. It's gotta release whatever fucking grand secret is in this thing. Let me just slip the tip in right here. That didn't work either, Big TV. Do you... do you smell woe? I smell woe and crushed aspirations. Let's go ahead and open up Yield Instruction Manual to get a glimpse at Flink's backstory, huh? Hmm. Ah, here. Turns out a bunch of friendly wizards lived in blissful harmony on Magica Island. Imagine... Ah. Oh. The great wizards of Imagica were shaken out of their prissy prance and lives when an asshole named Wicked Wainwright captured the four rulers of the land and locked their essences away in magic crystals. You must, well, you play as, as Flink, and he's a wizard's apprentice, and... Okay, I know what you're thinking. This game looks like your typical 90s platformer, and sure, I can see where you're coming from. The game rides comfortably on platforming archetypes of its generation. I mean, you crack enemies' skulls, you collect goodies, you frantically blue-blur scramble for lost spoils, but there's more. What the f***? And the monkey? You had to put the monkey down? Oh, Jesus Christ. Right. <clears throat> Let's talk about magic. It's important and it sets Flink apart from the piled mess of generic 90s platformers. The magical mechanics in Flink add strategic tweaks to gameplay. You can spend magic potions you've collected on pretty powerful spells like summoning kick-ass demons or manipulating objects. You have to be careful though because your magic reserves and your health are one and the same. As you continue to traverse the land of a magica, you come across spell scrolls. These give you sort of vague recipes for the magic that you can cast in game. Before you can use a spell, you have to complete the spell recipe at least once. This is where items you yank from the dead come into play. Toss a few together and look, a tiny lightning bolt. It's so cute. Death from above! Make sure you hold on to all the ingredients you collect. Items you collect in the beginning of your quest can be crucial to completing spells and other things a little later on. And yes, you will use spells in this game. They are a great offensive tool. There are loads of enemies from tiny fishies... Fuck. ...to big bosses. Fuck. Speaking of which, the enemy character designs are interesting and they're all pretty well animated too. Unfortunately, the enemies seem to have the upper hand when it comes to pixel detection. I think this is probably my biggest gripe with this game. When you're trying to stomp a face or make a quick jump, the game can feel unforgiving or just plain cheap. You know what makes up for it though? Music! The Sega CD brought disc quality sound into our Sega play sessions and Flink has got some solid tunes. <sighs> Talk about scraping the bottom of the geek barrel, huh? No Sega peripheral or add-on will get this thing running. Not even the Atari Jaguar I augmented. I really thought I could figure this out, Big TV. Wait. Big TV. Buddy, shut the fuck up. I think I'm thinking thoughts. Items you collect in the beginning of your quest can be crucial to completing spells and other things a little later on. Oh, how could I be so foolish? How could I be such a buffoon? <clears throat> the coffee did. <laughs> Oh. 
citizens of the world. Prepare yourselves for the ultimate clarity. <laughs> Prepare for the ultimate clarity with Crystal Pepsi, coming this summer, 1992. Uh, a crummy commercial? Son of a bitch! We went through all of that. All of that fucking silliness for nothing. This episode was worthless. Completely useless. Big TV, just get me down from here already. Jeez, I can't believe it. I spent all this money on all these fucking uh, peripherals and add-ons and no one even... Hey, if you like this video, why not take a gander at some of my other stuff? Also, check out the 8-Bit Duke and the Lonely Goomba. These two talented fellas certainly don't need my endorsement, but they've been an inspiration. Their channels are a near-endless source of gaming entertainment. Woof.